This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive, open, and free to everyone, everywhere. Consider subscribing and supporting through Patreon.com slash GeneralPack. This is the mechanism for you to support us financially so we can continue making high quality power system video tutorials. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com from Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies. Fault Analysis in Power Systems Part 3B This is the second video in Part 3 of the series in Fault Analysis in Power Systems where we will hand calculate the current voltage quantities for various types of fault. In this video we will see how phase current and voltages are calculated for a single line to ground fault on line A of the 13.8 kV system. So let's get started with our previous example. We have three synchronous generators having a short circuit capability of 600 MVA short circuit connected to a 115 kV bus. A delta Y transformer rated at 30 MVA connects the 115 kV bus to the 13.8 kV bus and has an impedance of 10% at 30 MVA. Step 1 of our calculations asked us to convert our system into per unit values and is exactly what we did in part 2b of our series. Here we draw the same network again. Now before we begin let us draw the system that we would expect for a one line to ground fault on the 13.8 kV bus with a diagram below. Now when the fault occurs at the point of the fault we see that the fault current goes to ground. Then it returns from the grounded system on the Y side of the transformer neutral and makes a circulating loop. We also see that the fault current coming from the 115 kV side of the system which is the source. We note that the fault current is not present on phase B and C lines on the 13.8 kV system. And because we have a delta AB Y grounded transformer connection fault current is only present on phase A and C side of the transformer but not phase B. Now let us go through the calculations by hand to prove this. Next we move to step number two which asks us to identify the type of fault involved. Now as mentioned before we have a single line to ground fault which is an unsymmetrical fault meaning an unbalanced fault type. This type of fault produces all sequence quantities the positive, negative and zero sequence components we're talking about current and voltage quantities. Next we move to step number three which asks us to make an unfaulted sequence network from the per unit converted system in step number one. These are the individual sequence network diagrams which were converted in part 2c of the series. Here we will redraw the same networks. So these are the unfaulted sequence network. This is the positive sequence network diagram which is indicated by the voltage source. The negative sequence network diagram is very similar to the positive sequence network however it does not have a voltage source and the zero sequence network diagram also does not have a voltage source however it does represent the delta Y transformer with the high voltage side open and the low voltage side grounded. And then in step number four we will draw the faulted sequence network. Given that the fault is a single line to ground fault we will connect all three sequence networks in series. This we have explained in great detail in a separate video in topic two derivations of sequence network diagrams of our series. Here we just redraw the series connected faulted networks. Let us describe the faulted sequence network diagram briefly. The topmost sequence is the positive sequence network which can be easily identified by the voltage source. The middle is the negative sequence network which is very similar to the positive sequence but does not have a voltage source. The bottom network is a zero sequence network which also does not have a voltage source. However we do account for the transformer in the zero sequence network diagram the open circuit is on the high voltage side and the short circuit on the low voltage side. Now let's move towards step number five. Here we will hand calculate the sequence network quantities. Since we have an unbalanced network we will calculate all three sequence components positive, negative and zero sequence. In this faulted sequence network we will see that all impedances are connected in series in a single loop and there is only one voltage source which is one per unit at angle zero degrees in this entire loop. 
This comes from the positive sequence now. Therefore, it can be deducted that all three sequence component current values or current quantities, which is positive, negative, and zero sequence currents, will be equal and they can be calculated by dividing the voltage with the sum of the impedance for the entire loop. The sum of the impedance of the entire loop will now be J.05 plus J.10 per unit. This is the positive sequence impedance plus J.05 plus J.10 per unit. This is for the negative sequence impedance. And finally, plus J.10 only for the zero sequence impedance. Now remember, for the zero sequence impedance, there is an open circuit for the zero sequence network. So we cannot consider the J.05 per unit generator impedance. So the total impedance of the entire loop will be J.40 per unit. Positive sequence current in this loop is equal to the prefault voltage, which is 1 per unit at the angle of 0 degrees, divided by J.40 per unit. And that gives us negative J2.5 per unit. Now this is the positive sequence current quantity. Since this is a per unit value, we will need to find the base of the current and multiply the per unit value with the base value to find the actual current quantity in amperes. The base value of current is equal to 30 MVA divided by square root of 3 times 13.8 kV, which results to 1255 amps. Multiply that with negative J2.5 and we get the actual ampere quantity for the positive sequence current, which equals 3,138 amps at negative 90 degrees. As we've stated earlier that all sequence component values are equal because the positive, negative, and zero sequence networks are connected in series. So the same current would flow through all three sequence network, which means that the positive sequence current is equal to the negative sequence current, which equals the zero sequence current, which equals 3,138 amps at the angle of negative 90 degrees. As a final step number six, we have to convert these sequence component values to phase current values by plugging in the sequence components and the A operators with the familiar equations below. What we will find is that for line A current on the 13.8 kV side, we get 9,413 amps at the angle of negative 90 degrees. For phase B line current on the 13.8 kV side, we get zero. The math just happens to be that we get zero amperes. And for phase C line current on the 13.8 kV side, we also get zero. This is exactly the same as what we assumed in our video on single line to ground fault derivations. And intuitively, only the phase shorted to ground is supposed to carry the short circuit current. In this case, the faulted phase is phase A, which has 9,413 amps at negative 90 degrees. The remaining phases, meaning phase B and F, have no fault current flowing, therefore they are zero. So now in the next part, what we will do is actually calculate the voltage quantities on the 13.8 kV side. So this will be split into the second part for part 3B. We hope that you find this video tutorial valuable and useful as a professional or a student. Please support us by becoming our patron and donating through patreon.com slash generalpack. Your generous donation will help us continue making high quality power system video tutorials. Thank you.